welcome back. So in the first branding lesson, we made the point that branding is all about creating differences. In this brief lesson, what we're gonna show you is where and how to create differentiation. And as usual, there'll be some examples to bring it to life. So the first one to cover is a great book on branding. This is by a guy called Martin Neumeyer, who I was lucky enough to meet a few years ago. Really fantastic book. It'll only take you about an hour to read it. It's very, very simple. It's very clear, but that doesn't make it get a waste of time. It's just a brilliantly simple book. And Martin Neumeyer summarizes the book by saying, to achieve originality, we need to abandon the comforts of habit, reason, and the approval of our peers and strike out in a new direction. Okay, what does that mean? It sounds a bit strange, but what does that mean? What that means for me is that if the market is going one way, then to create branding and to create differentiation, you need to be brave and go the other way. So taking that then into basic economics, if you look at a product that isn't differentiated, it's a me too product and a me too product can never define its market price it will always be set below the price of the product it copies. Okay, that's a really simple concept, but if you ever look at any brand that copies the lead brand or any product that ever copies the lead brand, it will never be able to achieve a higher price. And that's one of the key secrets of branding. It allows you to create higher prices for your products. So you've got to swim against the tide. You have to actually do something different to create your brand and allow it to stand out against others. So here's a nice simple example as well in one particular market, which is the airline market in Europe. So we're gonna look at three different providers. So in any market, any brand, you could break it down into three separate sections, which are price, function, and emotion. Ryanair are all about price. They're like Southwestern, they are just all about price. They are the cheapest, aim to be the cheapest in the market. Functionally, they're quite poor. The planes are dull, they're horrible inside. They're more like a coach than they are a plane. They're really, really basic inside. And the emotion around the brand is essentially negative. People really don't like them because they, they are just so focused on price, they, they don't even give very good customer service. So therefore, if their price goes up, then people will switch to a different provider. The second one in this, in this market is British Airways. British Airways are all about function. They're never gonna be particularly flash. They're never gonna be particularly seen as being overly comfortable. They're just always gonna be safe, functional, and steady. So you can pretty much guarantee that if you got chilly on a British Airways flight, they would bring you out a tartan rug. It'd be as though your auntie was flying the plane. It's someone nice and safe, you know you trust them, but they're never gonna blow your frock up. Now their functional promise was so strong that when they built Terminal 5 in, in London Heathrow, they got it completely wrong. They were losing people's luggage all over the place. And TripAdvisor did a survey a couple of weeks after it was finished, and over 50% of people said that British Airways could in no way be to blame, even though it was entirely their fault. And that's the strength of a functional promise. But what that doesn't allow is really premium pricing or really cheap pricing. So when if people, if people saw a British Airways flight that was really cheap, they would assume there was something wrong. And when they try to launch into the uh, low cost flying market, they use Barbara Cassani, who's a genius businesswoman uh, under the brand Go Fly. It failed because people didn't believe that British Airways could do it, you know, do it cheaply. Now Virgin, on the other hand, is all about emotion. Kevin Roberts in his book Love Marks talks about Virgin and he says that they've actually managed to create emotion right the way through the brand. So you could pay one pound or one dollar for a Virgin flight and think you'd have fantastic value. But you could also pay six thousand uh, dollars and think it was gonna be amazing. In truth, there's probably better airline providers out there now, but because of Virgin's amazing emotional promise, like Harley Davidson, like Sony, like Apple, a lot of these great big emotional brands, they're allowed, they're able to give much, much higher prices and people will still pay them. So it means that in a tough market, because they've got such a strong mm -hmm. emotional brand, they will often win. And that's one of the other real aims of a brand is to actually allow people to want to choose you. Going back to this, make you one of one. They want to choose you over and above anyone else. Now, because of these functional promises, because of this intro that I've given to you there, you will now be able to predict what puddings, what desserts they would serve on each of their flights to live their values. So I'm gonna show you three puddings that would be served on flights. These are joke ones, but they would be served on flights. 
and you have to guess which one it is. So here's the first one, which is a goo pudding. And actually, I must admit, I did take this picture myself. This was served on a flight to me. Okay, that's a really lovely premium product. It's obviously served on a virgin flight. So this one is a lovely British pudding. It's a microwavable spotted dick. Uh, and as you've probably guessed, that would be served on a British Airways flight. And Ryanair, which is all about cheap, 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 they would probably serve Tesco value creamed rice pudding, which is right at the bottom of the market. Even though they don't, that is a joke. So taking that on, we're now gonna show you another bit about branding. So I don't know if any of you have smoked, I presume some of you will have done, uh, but this brand, Nicorette. Nicorette live their brand in one word. If you've smoked, you can probably guess what it is. You're probably saying it's stop or quit. That would be a one word brand value, wouldn't it? But in fact, it's neither. It's not stop or quit, it's start. Now the reason it's start is because it really changes the way the voice and the imagery and everything is used. When you give up smoking, it feels like you're losing something. So the great thing about the word start is it means that it's much more positive. The brand uses much more positive language, much more positive imagery. You're not losing something, you're gaining freedom, you're gaining a fresh start to life. You're able to be on the other side of smoking. You're not being deprived of anything. That as a really simple brand message works beautifully. So this is another really simple branding book. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's called Why Johnny Can't Brand by Bill Schley and Carl Nichols. Um, it's a great book. It's another fairly simple read, probably no more than two hours. But what it really puts down is that there are eight reasons why people buy anything. And that is because people want to feel one of these emotions. They want to feel happier, smarter, healthier, richer, more secure, safer, more attractive, or more successful. And if you look at it, when you're starting to plan your brand and thinking about which one of those are you gonna satisfy, which need from a person you're gonna satisfy, then you'll have much more chance of success because just chucking something out into the market doesn't mean it's gonna work. But if you think, yeah, this is actually gonna make you smarter, this is gonna make you more successful, we're gonna make you more attractive. Maxim Magazine, part of their brand strategy was how to make uh, males massively more attractive to females. Whether it ever worked or not, I don't know. I never read the magazine, clearly, as you'd see. So moving on from that, how do we differentiate brands? How do we actually create, where are the bits within a brand or within a product, within a service that we use to actually create differentiation? And these are just some of the ones you could use. It can be touch. If you pick up an iPhone, you know it's an iPhone just because of the feel of it. Smell, sound, price, positioning, distribution outlet. Just by limiting distribution to certain outlets, you can actually change the way a brand is perceived or color. It can be about performance. It can be about who you're targeting. It can be something silly as the name. Um, it can be actual quality or perceived quality. It can be just by a celebrity endorsement and there's probably loads more. So this is the first exercise I'm going to ask you to have a look at. And that's really when you're looking at planning your brand, write down three things that when combined, and that's the secret is when combined, which three things make your brand different. It's quite a tough one, but it's quite an important one, obviously, as well. So you can see from that that differentiation is completely in your hands. You have to swim against the tide to create your own space in the market. So think about your language, think about your imagery, think about how you're going to make your brand different and understand where you position your brand in terms of price, function and emotion. What do you do that's different that others aren't doing? And think about what desire or need you're going to fulfill and which are the many possible ways you're going to use to create your own differences. They don't need to be massive, they just need to be different. They need to be little ways of making things different. And then like the Coke bottle, you need to think about how you can deliver it consistently everywhere. Consistency, consistently. That's the secret to branding. So in the next lesson, uh, we'll look further at brand values. We're going to cover on the word quality, which is quite an important one for me. We're going to talk about making mistakes and why logos are less important than feelings. Music